I am now going to introduce you to your presenter. Okay. And I'm going, you want to come on up here and I'll get your PowerPoint on the screen. You got the clicker? Well, what do oh, I do? There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. okay, so this is, um, for those of you who haven't met Anne, this is Anne Mundell Noel. She is the owner of Ultimate Hearing. And which is located in the Trader Joe's shopping center, you know, Marshalls, Trader Joe's. And so she is going to present today on smart hearing aids. Everything's smart these days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> okay. Thank you for having me today. I had a sheet out front at the desk and I asked, what do you want to learn from today's talk? Since no one filled out either sheet, I assume that you don't want to know anything. <laughs> and I know that that's not fair because you all came to gather information and hopefully the title is the thing that kind of attracted you. As Tony just said, everything is smart these days. Well, we want to keep getting smarter, and that's what I'm going to talk about. The first thing that I want to do is give you a very, very brief overview of hearing. We have a variety of people in here, some that have been coming to all the meetings, and this is kind of like, oh, boring. The others say, oh, I didn't know what is going on up there. So I'm going to go through this very quickly, but I want you to understand that hearing is very complex. What is happening right now is the sound is going down the ear canal, hitting the eardrum, vibrating three little bones, causing a fluid in that snail-like structure to make electrical impulse transmissions and that electrical signal is being sent up to your brain. The left ear is going to the right side of your brain. The right ear sound is going to the left side of your brain. They're talking to each other and in real time you're understanding and comprehending. Amazing. What's really amazing is that all of the hearing is being done by an organ in your body that's the size of a pea. So take your fingertip and put your little thumb at the top of your fingernail and that is the size of the organ of hearing. Pretty amazing. So because that organ is so tiny, Um, because it's so tiny, there's many factors that are important to it, and we're going to kind of breeze through those quickly. But I wanted you to see this diagram because although hearing is complex, we kind of get lost in the structure part and we forget about what's happening up in the brain. This diagram shows the blue and the red. And there is actually a portion in our brain that is dedicated to hearing. Amazing. It is all lined up. It's all structured in such a precise way that when you have a disruption to the system, the body tries to compensate and fill in that area that has been disrupted. So, 
I want you to understand as frustrated as you can get when it comes to your hearing, you have an amazing body, an amazing structure set up there. So there's many things along the pathway though that can disrupt that signal getting up to the brain. The number one health concern for seniors over the age of 65, hypertension, high blood pressure. Why do you think that that would be such a factor when it comes to hearing? Anybody want to say, what do we say about that little organ, right? The size of a pea? Okay. That organ, the blood flow in and out of that organ is crucial. If that organ doesn't get the blood, the oxygenated blood flow that it needs, the little hair cells inside of that organ start to die or atrophy. So think of a field of hay. You're growing something out in the field and if you don't water it richly from the ground, it can start to die. And it's along those same kind of pathways that you have to think when it comes to hearing. That's why as we get older, we get hearing loss. It's usually not that the hair cells have worn out, it's that they didn't get enough oxygenated blood and they start to atrophy. In other cultures, such as in the Mediterranean, where they have a little bit better diet and they exercise a little bit more, we don't see as much hearing loss with aging. So what can you do for yourself? Exercise, drink water, eat healthy, all the things that we don't like to do, but they really do make a difference. The other thing to just let you know, diabetes. Hearing loss is twice as common with people who are diabetic. Again, it's the way that the body is absorbing the nutrients and processing the sugars. Um, and pre-diabetics show 30% higher rate of hearing loss than those with normal blood sugar. So something, if you are diabetic, let your doctor know if you feel like you have a hearing loss so that he can at least be aware of it. But there's a lot of other factors that affect hearing and comprehension that are not hearing loss related. And I just want you to look at this list because these are factors that affect comprehension. Okay, so we talk about hearing and then we're talking about comprehension. Hearing is the act of the sound going through the organ of hearing to get up to the brain. But it's the brain that does the comprehension and the understanding. So when I have patients come in and if English isn't their first language, they may have a little bit more difficulty with comprehension. Would you agree? Right? If your English is a second language, if I start using words that you're not familiar with, it might take your brain a split, so a split second longer to understand. If you're a native to the area or a foreigner, again, local slang, different words that can affect comprehension, articulation. If I kind of slang my words, that's kind of hard for me to do, but if I do that, it makes it a little bit harder in order to get the sounds clearly up to the brain. Lung capacity. How would lung capacity affect comprehension? Oxygen flow. Oxygen flow. If I'm kind of a breathy speaker and I don't breathe from my diaphragm, I can't get as much out and so I don't come through as loud. Okay, so lung capacity, if we breathe from the diaphragm, we have more oxygen in our lungs, our voice will carry better. So those people who have COPD and other issues with their lungs and heart might not be able to enunciate and get as much energy out when they're speaking. Um, visual cues, we know that, right? The eyes and the ears work together, all of our senses working together. And so when we have macular degeneration or other glaucoma, other issues visually, we feel like maybe our hearing isn't as good as it used to be. And it's because those systems are working together. Musical background, 
Who in here is a musician? Okay. Did you know that you're really helping yourself with music? Music stimulates the whole brain, the whole cortex gets used, and musicians have a much more refined ability to discern differences in sounds. Makes sense, right? If you're playing an instrument, you gotta listen to certain keys. That is kind of subliminal training. So if you want to help improve your comprehension, start listening to a little bit more music. Even if you have it lightly in the background, not so that it interferes with the speech, but having it on, you're giving your brain more stimulation. Um, the level of education. And the reason I say the level of education is that people who have a higher level of education usually have what? A larger vocabulary. So if you have a larger vocabulary, when it comes to comprehension, your brain can more quickly fill in different words that it may be missing. Physical fitness, we talked about that a little bit. Exercising, oxygen flow, helps with the stimulation of the blood flow, which will also help with overall comprehension. Uh, right by that box it says diet, I kind of talked about that. And then the speed of speaking. We all know that if we slow down and just speak at a little bit slower rate, sorry, slower rate, that we will be easier to comprehend. But if we're like our grandkids and we start to talk really fast, then it makes it really hard, right? <laughs> so even though I'm articulating, I'm still produ producing the sound at a good level, the speed is a huge indicator. So I know that Tony normally goes through this in the beginning, but as a reminder, when you encounter somebody and you tell them that you have a hearing loss, they look at you like a dead, a deer in the headlights, right? What? They don't know what to do. So they start talking louder, right? That does not help with the comprehension. You guys can all um, ascertain that. So the biggest thing you can do is to tell them, I just need a little bit more time to process. So if you could just slow down a little bit, it makes a big difference. Is the speed at which I'm speaking right now comfortable for everyone? Is everybody understanding what I'm saying? Good. Okay, so although hearing loss is the second most prevalent health condition in seniors, between hypertension and arthritis, although it's common, it is not healthy to go untreated, okay? One of the main reasons that hearing loss goes untreated, uh, there was just an article in this month's AARP magazine and the writer said that it was social stigma. She felt that it was because hearing loss has a negative uh, connotation to it and, she, and that's why people are not wearing hearing aids. And I totally disagree. The stigma of hearing loss in a most recent study, I was just at a conference last week, the young generation today doesn't even think about hearing loss as being a negative stigma. Why do you think that is? So many people have them. So many people have them. How about... They speak so fast themselves. They speak so fast themselves. How about, do you see them walking around with stuff in their ears yeah. all day long? Yeah. 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 They had headphones on. They have Bluetooth devices on. They don't think it's unusual that you have something on your ear. <laughs> But one of the biggest factors that has helped improve the negative stigma is that hearing aids work. Oh my gosh, they're not like grandma's hearing aids that we think of in the past where which were the big clunky things or look like she had a piece of glue or bubble gum stuck in her ear and everybody could see it from a mile away. Most of you looking at hearing aids have something that's very discreet. Most people can't even tell. We often say that a hearing aid is less conspicuous than a hearing loss, right? If you can hear, people are not looking in your ear to see if you have something in there. It's when you can't hear that they're like, what the heck, Where's, what's going on, right? So I just want to encourage you that doing something about hearing loss is very important. We know that if you don't, studies after studies, and Stephanie will definitely go into this um, in October or November when she speaks, 
but depression, isolation, frustration. We don't need to focus here on the negative. You guys kind of are aware of this, but just know that there is a total relation between the amount of stimulation your brain receives and your overall physical health and mental well-being. Does that make sense? Okay, we're gonna go into that a little bit deeper here. How about that fact, is that not a fun one? How about the brain can't remember what it doesn't hear? Duh, of course. So if the brain cannot remember what it doesn't hear, why would you expect to be able to remember and recall and participate in a conversation if you weren't getting all the stimulus? It can't happen. So the more hearing loss present means the less information the brain is receiving. Going back to that AARP article, I feel that the main reason that people don't do something about hearing loss earlier is because insurance doesn't pay for hearing aids. So we wait until we have to get them and everybody knows we need them before we do something about it. And I am working with Tony and some other audiologists in trying to encourage our local senators and congressmen to do something about it, to pass a bill. Because hearing loss, although it's the number two health concern for seniors, we have a really, really tiny voice on Capitol Hill. The American Medical Association is so strong they don't want to give up their piece of the pie. <laughs> so audiologists have gone on to become a doctor now. You're a doctor of, audiologist, of audiology as of 2007. So I have a master's degree in hearing sciences. They now have a doctorate. You'll see an AUD. I was grandmothered in, so. I didn't have to go through that. It would not have changed the profession of what I'm doing. It would have been more about uh, operating, operation, um, being an audiologist in the operating room or doing cochlear implants and things that I wasn't going to do anyway. But I want you to know the audiology profession has taken a step to try to be the doctor so that you can come directly to us. It's called direct access. There's a bill right now in Congress that's talking about direct access. As it is right now, you have to go to your physician if it is a medical condition in order to get the hearing test paid for. If you are coming just so you can get hearing aids and get tested, Medicare doesn't think that that should be paid for and they won't pay. Now I know some of your uh, secondary insurances do cover hearing tests and are starting to get a little bit more involved in that and that's all well, but they're not getting reimbursed for it. They're just giving that to you in order to get you into their network. Same thing with the hearing aids. But what we need to do is we need to band together and have a voice on Capitol Hill to say, if we would be proactive in hearing, if we would actually do something at a younger age, we would be able to prevent cognitive decline, some dementia, falls, depression, isolation, all the things that are covered through Medicare, but not the source. The source is hearing loss and it's not covered. So be prepared come the fall that we will be doing more about this as far as trying to get a voice. I have made a video and sent it to Mimi Walters to ask her to sponsor a bill in order to do this. So that's kind of a side note, but a very important one. Okay, so getting back to hearing loss. Therefore, more effort needed to stay engaged and comprehend. Okay, the lack of stimulus makes you have to work harder. Do you enjoy coming to these meetings? It's kind of nice to be able to come to a meeting when you can actually hear and comprehend what's being said. If you can't understand me, <clears throat> excuse me, you can read it. And I really appreciate Tony and the effort that she makes in order for you to feel like you have a place to come with other people who are experiencing what you're experiencing. 
But what we're going to talk about now is a little bit more on how to get smarter. So here's something that um, I know you guys are all looking for the holy grail. You're all looking for that one thing that's going to make life so much better when it comes to hearing. And I hate to say, I don't think I have it today. The reason is, is that there is nothing scientifically available right now to regenerate the nerve cells in our ears. They're working on it. Boy, are they working on it. Um, they're looking at hair follicles from jellyfish because you know a jellyfish's tentacles with all the little fine hairs on the end, they regenerate themselves. And they're actually implanting those kinds of hair cells inside of animals to see if they could get them to regenerate. So have hope, we'll keep pressing forward, but until then, we're gonna work on the exterior devices. We're gonna look at the hearing aids themselves. Um, hearing aids help replace the missing information and the way that um, they measure how much effort you are exerting is through something called pupilometry. Think of that, pupilometry. They did a test and they looked at how dilated your pupils were when you were comprehending, when you were listening. So if you were leaning in and you had to really concentrate, your pupils are more dilated. And so what they, are, are less dilated, they're more restricted. And so that is how they did these tests to determine some of the statistics on ease of hearing. Hearing aids, we'll all agree, have changed, and to make, they are now automated and they make intelligent operations. So no more POTS. Who had hearing aids with POTS, potentiometers? Come on, I know you did. Yeah, there's a few of you raising your hand. So potentiometers are these little things on the inside of the hearing aid. And Isaac wouldn't know because he's not been around that long, but I used to sit there with a little screwdriver and adjust them and then say, how does that sound? Does that sound better? Can you tell the difference? Because that's all we had back in the day, 20, 30 years ago, was that the hearing aid was amplifying the sound, but only one or two little things could make an adjustment. Now the hearing aid on the right side, over 100,000 calculations per second. I just went to a conference last week, a new hearing aid coming out with, quote, artificial intelligence. Whoa, what does that mean? It means that when you put your hearing aid on and you make adjustments, it's going up to the manufacturer's cloud and they are capturing what you're doing and what kind of an environment you're in so that they can have the hearing aid more refined and make those adjustments for you without you doing them. So just kind of like a car that drives itself, a hearing aid that actually adjusts itself even more than it does today. Things to think about of how technology is doing so much more. So smart hearing aids, they're working to replace that information that's being missed internally. So most of you, I'm sure, have had a hearing test and the majority of you, I would assume, have a moderate to severe hearing loss or greater. So there's a lot of information that the brain is just not receiving. So the purpose of the hearing aids is to replace that. So if we look, they are mini computers, but the thing is, they are trying to replicate what your brain does naturally. Think about that. How can we get in a device to replicate what you do naturally? It's really hard. And the thing is, is that everybody has different needs, right? If I wore a, a hearing aid, I'm gonna give you a scenario of what I'm thinking about. I have a hearing aid on three different people. If I'm in a restaurant and I am the waitress, I need to hear the speech, I need to hear the cooks. I need to hear who came in the front door. I have a certain scope of what I need the hearing aid to do. If I'm the bus boy, 
I don't necessarily want to hear all that sound. I just want it to be more comfortable. I need to know if somebody calls my name, but the clanking of the dishes would be really irritating, and so I would want my hearing aid in that situation to perform a little differently. If I'm the dishwasher guy in the back, and I am scraping dishes, or the cook, I'm going to have different needs. And if you're the person sitting at the table, you also have different needs. Does that make sense? We want the hearing aids all to be doing different things. So in the past, we had the hearing aid and it just did one thing. It amplified sound. Now the hearing aids are starting to get to the point where they can actually tell or sense what environment you're in and automatically change to that environment to try to help you with your comprehension. So they're making all these calculations thinking, okay, if I'm in this situation, they want this down, they want this up. And they are good. The hearing aids are getting so much better. But we have to remember that hearing is very complicated and it requires the physical component as well as the intellectual component. And what do I mean by that? So as much as we want the hearing aid to be doing the work, we want that holy grail, the bottom line is the purpose of a hearing aid is to give the brain the cleanest, clearest signal to process, and then it's up to our brain to do the work. So there's the intellectual component. You have a very active part in your hearing. When you say the hearing aids don't work, I can appreciate you saying, I'm struggling. It's not working for me. But I want you to understand the hearing aid is an aid. It's not a cure-all. But they are getting so much better at picking out what is speech and amplifying it and what is background noise and reducing it so that you have the best chance to get the comprehension. But I do want you to know it doesn't come naturally, right? We all know that, but it's getting so much better on rather than what it was. So again, smart hearing aids are going to give the brain the cleanest, clearest signal and to provide the best signal to noise ratio. So right now, there's some kind of noise going in the background. That just changed our signal to noise ratio. But because the microphone is amplifying louder than that noise floor, it didn't really affect our comprehension. But if I wasn't on a microphone, that noise might have been a little bit more invasive, right? So how are hearing aids getting smarter? There's a couple of ways. Number one is the hearing aids today, um, most of them can now connect to your iPhone. So who's afraid of technology? Hmm? Raise your hand, are you afraid of technology? Okay, quite a few hands. Who in here has either a smartphone or an, I an iPhone or an Android? Who ha in here has a smartphone? Look at that, look around. That's great. Who uses them? <laughs> okay, some of you have them, some of you don't use them. Who feels comfortable with their phone? Okay, the majority of you feel comfortable. So one of the ways that the iPhone or the smartphone is an advantage is because when you take a phone call, the message comes into both ears. Ha! Ah, how does that help? When I answer a regular phone, what happens? One ear. Or if I'm on a speaker phone, what happens? Two ears, but what? There's distance between the phone and my ears, and everybody else hears the conversation. With today's smartphones, when you get them hooked up, you hear the conversation right into your ear. It's quiet, nobody else hears the conversation but you. And so some people will say, well, I've got that in my car. I use it in my car. Well, what's the disadvantage of the car? Number one, everybody in the car hears your conversation. 
and how many people sit in the car and keep their conversation going because they still want to talk, but they're already at their destination. So when you have the phone connected to the hearing aids, you take your phone with you. So you can be one of those, quote, weird people who talk to themselves in the grocery store because you're carrying on a conversation and people don't see the phone because it's down here and they're not hearing anything. But your hearing aids are doing the work for you. The other way that the smartphones are, or the hearing aids are getting smarter is that you can actually turn the microphones of your hearing aids off with your phone you can do this all manually, but it's so much easier to see it on a phone. But you can actually turn the microphones of the hearing aids off and then hear just the conversation. The outside sound doesn't affect you as greatly because you're only hearing the phone conversation. So if you were stranded or you're in a noisy restaurant and you need to take a call, you can turn the microphones off. So both of those scenarios improve the signal to noise ratio. We're allowing the signal, which is the speech, to be louder than the noise or the background, okay? So the bottom line is when you're getting hearing aids, it's all about that signal to noise ratio. Right now, the signal is coming through nice and loud and the noise is very low and so we have an optimal environment. And this is the kind of environment we'd like to have all the time, right? Well, with some accessories in your smartphones, you can get this. It's available. And before, just so I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but before, you used to have to wear something like this around your neck, right? Everybody knew. Oh, we tried to convince you that it wasn't so bad and, you know, it's got a T-coil and you could do everything here. Now, you can do all of that with, uh, oh, this. Everything that is incorporated into something like this, and this is called a streamer. This connects to your hearing aids. It allows you to connect to the phone. It allows you to turn the volume up and down. It allows you to mute the hearing aids. All the things I just talked about, it's now available in a phone. So now you can be just as, uh, I don't want to say disruptive, that's not the word, but you can hang with your grandchildren <laughs> in just a second, because you could be pulling out your phone at the table too, but you're making adjustments to your hearing aids instead. You want me to pass that, uh, show it around? Sure. Get more up close. Um, real quick question. Yeah, are they backward compatible? Are they backward compatible? No. Okay. When I say he's asking are they backward compatible, he means can those things go into previous versions of hearing aids? And for the majority of the manufacturers, the answer is no. When it comes to Widex, they are one of the only ones that do have a system where you can wear a littler guy around your neck and connect to your phone. But anything that's wireless, you have to have the technology in that hearing aid in order to be wireless, meaning nothing around your neck. What I meant is if you, if you have one already with around the neck, can you get an app that would actually replace that if your hearing aids are already set up to use one of the dongles? So if your hearing aids are already set up to use one of the dongles, yes, there are apps for Widex with their products. There is no, not an app for the Oticon streamer. Other manufacturers, I'm not overly sure. Um, they also allow you to turn up the volume. The other thing that they, they can do is you can actually do hearing therapy on your phone into your hearing aids, and it's free, okay? So, I know some of my patients are here in the audience and I know that they would all testify that using HearCoach, a free app from Starkey, you can do it with your hearing aids on and if you don't have the smart hearing aids, you can just do the app. It's up there called HearCoach, H-E-A-R Coach. You would go into your smartphone, go into your app store and download HearCoach. 
It's an application where you do hearing therapy. You retrain your brain on how to hear sounds in quiet, and then they start to add background noise and gets much more complicated. Something else that's available is a connect clip. These are little things that are starting to become available, again, all wirelessly, but if Tony were to put on the connect clip, I could talk, she could talk to me in a noisy restaurant and I could hear her right into the hearing aids. Then I could also mute the microphones of my hearing aids if I only wanted to hear her. Okay, so this is how the technology is getting better. Number one, it's getting stronger in the processing of how it pulls the words from the background noise. And number two, it's getting better on the accessories and the apps that allow you to have control over your hearing. And that little connect clip that she's got goes up to 65 feet. So you could have your pastor or your rabbi or your minister wear the clip and it would go right into your hearing aid. So hearing aids are getting smarter because they allow you to stay more connected to the people you love and want to communicate with, right? So the other thing that having an improved signal to noise ratio and getting more stimulation to the brain is that your conversations are much more spontaneous, more confident, and more memorable. And um, I do know that I have a few patients here in the audience who have been using the smart technology and have given me their stories. I don't know if any of them are feeling confident enough if they would like to come up, if you want to raise your hand and you want to come up and tell them something about how you benefited with your hearing aids, that's great. If you don't, I'll kind of anonymously tell a story or two. Does anybody want to come up? I can bring the microphone to you. You can stay where you are. <laughs> no? Okay. Nancy? Nancy wants to say something. Do you want to go up there? You're okay. You can stand up. Okay. <laughs> so let me just say, Nancy has a significant hearing loss. She is just about due for cochlear implants, but her hearing aids are helping her until that point. So go ahead. I went, went into hearing aids kicking and screaming. I was still working at the age of 65. <coughs> Pardon me. And I couldn't hear my boss sitting at the end of the table asking me a question. Ooh, this is significant. So I went and got a hearing aid at a dispenser and that was the beginning, and it helped. And I worked a couple more years, and over the years since then, I have gradually upped the power that I need in my hearing aid. For your information, next week I will be 91. Yay! And I feel better now about my hearing than I did when I started. But I have to give Anne a lot of the credit for that because she has worked diligently with me. And I have progressed through the various technologies. I worked for years on computers. And I had reached a point a few years ago where I couldn't even use the computer. My brain was just beat up from trying to hear. In the past two years, I have led several groups in my church. I've spoken publicly for a number of things. And it all is because of the technology that's available to you. She told me when I first started going to her that I didn't hear my, with my ears, I heard with my brain. And that was kind of a slap in the face because I didn't think my brain was working very well. <laughs> but I have to tell you that with the improvement of each time I upped my technology in my aids or with my aids, everything gets better. In this last year, my health has improved believe it or not, mm -hmm. and I've done nothing different. 
I can exercise longer. I can lift more weight. I do my own housework. All of these things have helped. And my smartphone now, when I take it to church, I can sit there and turn it up and down so that the music is okay. And when it's loud, I turn it down a little. And when it's not loud enough, I turn it up. Today is the first time that I have come to this meeting and haven't read what is being said. I have listened over my tea coil. Yay. And I have listened through my hearing aids. And I have used my phone to up and down the different voices. It's been amazing. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm loving life a lot more. Thank you. So just so you know, Nancy, and she doesn't, I asked her, doesn't mind me sharing, she has a severe to profound hearing loss. So she's not one who says, oh, well, my hearing loss is too bad. Because she has a significant hearing loss, she needs the cleanest, clearest sound going to the brain. When I was in graduate school, as an example, um, we had a, learned that there was a class um, of deaf children, and they are hard of hearing, and they put them next to the gymnasium, because why? They can't hear anyway. Oh my gosh, total opposite, right? They don't need the worst listening environment, they need the best listening environment. And so what I want to encourage you is to think about when you're getting hearing aids, it's about getting the cleanest, clearest signal up to that brain. So Tony, did you have, did you want to make a comment on there? Somebody else want to comment? Alex, do you want to say something? Okay. Not really, yeah. I'm going okay. here. Okay, well I got one over here. Uh, I just wanted to say my personal experience is that when you have a hearing loss, it is it can be exhausting um, if it's not corrected properly. I'm not quite as eloquent as our last lady, but I do want to say since um, I have my Oticon and I'm learning all the things about it, I can't be more grateful than for all of the things available to me to learn. And if I don't learn and don't hear now, it's my problem. Uh, they are wonderful, what a wonderful, I don't mean to be advertising for one particular, but that's what I own. And I've had wonderful results. Um, I can hear more at concerts, at plays, uh, in meetings than I've ever heard before. And I feel more like one of the people attending. I used to feel like an outsider and not being able to hear. But um, it does take time to learn all about it because I'm not as quick technology as uh, some people are. So repetition is important. Um, I spoke with one of my friends that uh, is in one of the, I don't know, the old pros or one of the groups and she was in a play and very, very, uh, a lot of dialogue. And afterwards I said to her, I'm so proud of you. However in the world did you remember all of that? And she said, practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's going to take what I have to do to get the ultimate, um, what is available to me. But I really do thank Oticon for coming up and for all of their research and knowledge about what I needed. And thank you, Ann, for introducing it to me. Thank you. Um, I have one more, but thank you. Give her a round of applause. I'm going to tell you one more story. Oh, we've got one more. Somebody in the back. I think it was Daniel. <laughs> He's got his hand raised. Um, I have um, serious hearing loss. Am I talking too loud or is it just me? I'm getting an echo. Um, more? Is that yeah. better? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I'm giving thought to new hearing aids that Anne gave me to try uh, about a month ago, and I had them for two weeks. And I was absolutely stunned by the fact that I can actually determine where noise was coming from, the direction. And the clarity was so much better on that new hearing aid. And I was blown away when she told me that when I put that hearing aid in, I can start my coffee in the morning. Yeah. Would you like to discuss that? Yeah. <laughs> He's, he, he is telling the truth. Um, Tony, the man can front. The, um, the Otakon hearing aids have a app in them that's called IFT. If this, then that. We haven't even explored how it's going to be used, but Otakon, one of the manufacturers, has secured that technology in their hearing aid. So right now, the way that we use that technology is if your battery goes low, you could send yourself a text message or you could send your daughter an email to say, pick me up some batteries. It would happen automatically. As soon as it got set up, that would happen. She would be coming with batteries before you knew it. The same thing though he was talking about with smart houses, sorry we're getting some reverb, um, is that you can have your coffee in the morning and when you close your battery door it would start your coffee maker. So <laughs> it's, I'm serious, that's the type of technology we're getting into. So one of the things that I want to touch on because I know this becomes a very sensitive topic, hearing aids are made different. High price hearing aids does not mean quality. Just because you pay four, five, six thousand dollars for a set of hearing aids doesn't mean you're getting the best quality. And I really want you to be educated consumers and that's one of the things that Tony really works on is make sure you get your subjective experience and your objective experience measured. It, what do I mean by that? You look at the bottom. There's two cars. They both get you from point A to point B. Do you think there's a price difference between those two cars? Yeah. Why? They, they both do the same job. What is the difference? Style. The style. The quality of the components that it was made with, right? If you make a car on the left and you go zero to 60, do you think the car on the right could do that faster? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why? They're both cars with engines. Why? It's a sports car. Because the motor inside of it is designed different. Okay? If you got in an accident, which car would you like to be in? The one on the left or the one on the right? Yeah. Really? You want to be some people want to be on the one on the left because it's a convertible? Is that why? Because the one on the the right is the uh, the sports car, the little Mercedes that should stop faster, quicker, respond better. Right? You could avoid the accident, right? With the one on the right. The one on the left, you have to have a better reaction time. Somebody already took my line there. The same thing is with hearing aids. How they're made matters. There is reasons that there are hearing aids that have the quietest circuit, the best wind and noise reduction, the longest battery life, the way the hearing aid separates the speech from the background noise. That is the difference of why some of the people here today are saying, I love my hearing aids, because they actually work. So when you're purchasing hearing aids, you really need to ask the person that you're pur purchasing them from, why did they choose the hearing aids they do? Why are you selling this brand? Why do you think that this model is best for me? That is something that you have a right to know. So the first thing, and we've talked about this many times, pick the right provider. Get referrals. Just make sure you have an educated decision as to why you go where you go. It's no different than when you pick your doctors. You don't go into your orthopedic surgeon and ask them, so what brand of knee replacement are you putting in my leg? 
right? You don't. You know, some people say I do, okay? Well, good, because there's enough information out there to know, is it titanium, is it steel, is it gonna be this, is it gonna be that? That's the kind of information you could and should have when you're going in to buy a hearing aid. You need to know enough about it so that you can relay your needs to your provider. But the bottom line is, as an audiologist with 30 years of experience, I have a hard time keeping up on all the technology. I just went to a conference last week. I'm going to another one in two weeks. There is so much information that as a professional, I have a hard time just keeping up with it. How would you expect that you should know? You shouldn't. That's the job of the professional that you go to see. And you should ask them, why are you picking this hearing aid for me? So you need to trust that the person has the education, the experience, and the empathy to make your world better through improved hearing. So when you purchase something, it should make it better, it should make it easier, and it should make you healthier, okay? If something is better, it means it takes less effort. So going to that pupillometry, right? I shouldn't have to concentrate as hard. I should be able to relax. I should be able to close my eyes, even just enjoy. I could start to have spontaneous conversations with people. The other thing is that it should make you healthier. You should be aware. You should be able to localize better to where sound is coming from. I should be able to hear, or it should be, my expectations should be realistically told to me. Nancy said for the first time, I can eavesdrop. Do you remember when you said that? She said, my neighbors went through my window and I didn't want to listen, but I heard them. She's like, I couldn't believe I could eavesdrop. Now, the healthy side of that is what? I could hear somebody walking by my window, so I wouldn't be surprised if they knocked on my door, right? I'm aware of my world around me. How many people have issues with balance? A lot of us because the balance system and the hearing system are in that same bony structure. Our balance comes from our eyes, our ears, and the bottom of our feet, okay? So if one of those, we have some neuropathy in our feet, or we have some hearing loss, or some visual, or we have all three, you're gonna be not as stable. The hearing is one of the most important portions of our balance because we can localize, we know better in time and space where we are. And that is one of the biggest things that I think has helped Nancy is that she's really been more aware of what's happening around her and the way that the hearing aids process the sound. So I just, uh, I know that we wanna take some questions. I wanna be sensitive that, to that. We've got just a little bit of time. Um, the main thing is, as you can tell, I did not mention specific hearing aid manufacturers. And I wanna be sensitive to um, other colleagues and professionals. But I want you to know when, and Tony has talked about this, when you buy a hearing aid, know why they choose the hearing aids they do. Okay, I will tell you not to diss Costco. Costco's business model works really well for Costco. What does that mean? It means they sell a moderate product at a moderate price. What they don't tell you is that 72% of the people who previously bought their first hearing aid from Costco said they would never go back for their second. Why? Because moderate doesn't work in background noise. It works in quiet, and it can work in a little bit of noise, but when you get into background noise, that's when the difference between the car on the right and the car on the left show up. So when you're looking at hearing aids, there are different operations. Kaiser is connected with Siemens. Connect Hearing Aid is with Phonak. Here USA is with Siemens. You gotta know why people are buying or telling you the hearing aids that um, they are. And I just want to, somebody gave me this and I forgot to mention it. They asked a question about Audigy, a four page insert here on Audigy hearing aid. And I'm not gonna open this up, but what I'll tell you is Audigy certified means proprietary software. 
What does that mean? It means you can only go to that office. Even though they sell an Otacon, it's an Otacon AGX. And AGX is the Autogy brand. So what does that mean? It means you can only go to that office, and if you don't like the person at that office or you want to change, the next office is about 40 miles away. And that's what you get when you go to somebody who's got proprietary software. And so that's what that is. Tony? Yeah, that all um, proprietary software, uh, proprietary hearing aids could also be called locked hearing aids. Yeah. Locked. And I just brought it in today. There was a, an article here about the pitfalls, uh, pitfalls um, of getting locked hearing aids. So, and the, it's back here if anybody's interested. So what she means by locked hearing aids, um, if you go to Miracle Ear, you get Miracle Ear hearing aids. If you wanted to go somewhere else, you can't. You're locked into that one, which is fine. If that's what you want, that's fine. I'm just letting you know kind of the pros and cons. But let's wrap it up here. Yeah. I was just going to say, I'm new to the T-coil, and I'm getting a buzzing. It's because you're sitting next to the wall. Okay. You're sitting next to all to of this electrical equipment. Oh, that explains it. Okay, so let's call, I know people have buses to catch, so let's wrap it up and thank you for your time. Anybody else have a question? I have one more question. Wait a minute, one more question. Yeah. Who do we make the donations out to? The Hearing Well Club. What a great question that thank is. You. I love that question. Turn Anybody else want to make a check out to the Hearing Well Clubs, please. Enjoy your, your little bag of goodies. Those are from some of the manufacturers, and um, I'm available for questions. And um, so Joyce will take your... Uh,